Hi guys, welcome back to a new vlog. I am popping in from the future, the future? Just because I realised I hadn't even said hi in this video and I'm just gonna run the vlog chronologically and I realised that the first clip that I filmed I didn't even say hi, so I wanted to say hello. If you're here for the Hermes unboxing, it's literally in a few minutes time, but, <laughs> but until then, this is just a little clip from the middle of the week because I know you guys love to see a little bit of just day-to-day -day life. And I thought rather than just making this a full Hermes unboxing, I wanted it to be more of a vlog as always. Um, and I also have a big announcement, like a huge announcement at the very end of the video. So make sure you stick around after the unboxing. On to the vlog. Hi guys, welcome to Waffle Wednesdays. <laughs> We're gonna name this Waffle Wednesdays, although we probably won't even use that ever again, will we? And it'll be like, well, that lasted one week. What, saying that we want to do this every week? Waffle Wednesdays, yeah. I want to do this every day, but we'll get the vlog camera out maybe once a week. Yeah, I do enjoy our little chats over dinner. So the idea, guys, is that Alex bought me a waffle maker. I don't think I've put it in the vlog. Oh, it's so good. It's unreal. I'll, I'll link the one below that he got us because it makes the round, the proper, I mean, they're all this way. This, this one's a good one here. It makes the round, like American waffles. Alex got it me as a surprise. It's a well done for the success of my Holland Cooper collection. You're a very hard person to buy for and you've been talking about what we've been watching um, Parks and Rec a lot. Yeah. And obviously Leslie and that is obsessed with waffles. Why would anybody ever eat anything besides breakfast food? People are idiots, Leslie. So I've yeah. been watching that show and just been like, oh, I could really kill some waffles tomorrow. Yeah, so, I know, I know we were. Somewhat a treat for you and me. Yeah, I know, but it was it was a big, very cool treat. And so we've been having loads of different types of waffles. And then yesterday we realised we had loads of jam and loads of peanut butter. So we're making peanut butter jam waffles today. So I've got some um, Dalesford organic strawberry vanilla jam, as well fancy. And we've just got our usual whole earth, this time I went for smooth. And we've also got this, this guys is unreal, coconut peanut butter from Meridian. That is just ridiculous, like ridiculous. But I'm just gonna go for, um, I'm gonna go classic. Just peanut butter and jam in like a Can't waffle sandwich. Is that what you're doing? I'm gonna have the cloud brew. Are you? Yeah, I've been wanting to try this for ages. Yeah, Lumine sent us these cloudberry jams over. So good. From Finland. So what cool. Waffle sandwich. How good is that This is so great. Honestly, I did so much research looking into waffles and I was actually on the verge of buying you like one of those industrial <laughs> ones, you know, the ones that are like this how much, big. How much would that have cost? I think they're a few hundred quid. Gosh, are they? But this, this one was 90 pound, I think. It's not bad for how but good it is. There is one up from it that does two at a time, but the square. Square, and I think yeah. they just taste better when they're circular. Yeah. <laughs> well, the circular ones are the more traditional, I feel. Is it great? Is it really great? Oh, You're I'm taking putting, too long. So I'm putting peanut butter on this one and I'm going to put the jam on this side. Oh, yeah. What's it like with that? What's that jam like? Is it a bit different? Mm. A bit unusual? It's really good. So, ooh, I'm excited. Oh, it all just sits inside all the different waffle it's holes. It's side idea by Bo. Oh, I bet. I bet it's he's like, you've butter. got the peanut butter out and you're not giving me any. Okay, I've got peanut butter one side, I've got jam on the side, I'm just gonna have a oof, sandwich, that bad boy. Mm. Very good. Mm. This is such a good idea, isn't it? Oh my god, this is the best lunch. It's gonna be our treat on Wednesdays. We thought we'd call it Waffle Wednesdays. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> I like it. It's just something to look forward to midweek, isn't it? After you get a bit of a slump midweek, I'm definitely feeling a little bit grumpy today, but I also think it's just time in a month's time as well, actually, I've just realised. Right. So that's why I think I'm feeling a bit grumpy. But actually, like, the weather is cracking the flags. It's absolutely scorchio. Stunning. Is that a northern slang term? Probably. Not cracking the flags. Mm. Well, yeah, because other people don't call them flags. I remember this when I started talking and saying, I'm going to get these flags. Oh, yeah. And people thought I meant like flying the flag flags. What did they call them? Paving stones. Paving, paving stones. Patio, or patio flags. Patio, patio flag. stones. I think it is a northern thing. Mm. Flags, yeah. Flagstones. So it's got so hot that it's cracking the pavement, mm. that's what you say. That's, that's what that say, metaphor say means, is. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's absolutely unbelievable. Not cloud in the sky. It's beautiful. So we need to go for a walk in a bit, but I also have some work to do. But it's good, this jam. Yeah, it's really well, good. This is vanilla and... Vanilla and strawberry. Oh, it's got actually chunks of... I know. Chunks strawberry. Of strawberry in it. Oh, mm. This is... This is 
What are you doing on this one? Peanut butter and jam, yeah. Yeah. A different jam. Yeah, nice. I need to try and get a protein waffle mixture. Mm. Just so I don't see it feel there's no way doing this. Yeah, we can just put some protein powder in the mixture, the bag. Yeah, but there's a lot of butter and sugar. And, is there? Mm. Mm. Not loads, but... Yeah, this is great. We were just talking about Jeff Bezos, weren't we? Mm. Going, yeah. to, going to the moon. Where's he going? <laughs> I don't think he's coming to the moon. I think it's, I think he's going, I really need to look into this more. It's the Apollo mission. It's like the anniversary of the Apollo mission, I think. I hope I'm not getting Did the Apollo go Jim down? and Elon mixed up. Maybe, but there was two, wasn't there? There's a lot of Apollo. Because there's one with uh, Tom Hanks film. Yeah, Apollo 13. So it's, it's one of those anyway. Um, and it's like on the anniversary of that, I believe. And he's asked his brother to go up with him. Just, they're like just the, them too. I think they're obviously going to go with a team, but like he's like best friends of his brother, so he asked mm. his brother to do it. There's a little video online of him asking his brother's like completely mind blown about it. What a thing to ask someone. Yeah. Do you want to go to space with me? Like he's supposedly like a massive space nerd. Like mm. he wanted to go since he was a kid. So at least gonna that be... was me. Yeah. I was just I was the biggest space nerd. I was obsessed with space and wanting to go and like. I mean, I've said this so many times, but literally, like, I was so obsessed, I can't even describe. Like, I had star posters all over my walls. I remember the first time I went back to your mum's house and we stayed in your bedroom and you still had the stars on, the, on your ceiling. Yeah. They're like 21. Orion's Belt. Orion's Belt Constellation. That's that's what I based my Ejibemba collection on. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, I, I just, I was obsessed. So, I realised I wasn't very good at science. Like, genuinely, it was like... I'm not good at science and maths, like this is a dream I'm gonna have to give up, so I did. I was like, right, I'll do something else then. Never mind. But I don't understand, so so now Jeff Bezos has his own space company like yeah. Elon does. Mm. Building their own air. Yeah, I think it's like I think it's next month he goes. What? So it's yeah. why is he even right. making this thing? And it's I mean his. I, I I only followed him on Instagram the other day. Oh. And it's his? Yes, it's gone. I mean he's one of the is he the richest guy? I thought Branson, I thought Branson was making like a moon landing thing. No, nobody's going to the moon. Ago. It's not the moon. He's he was doing a Virgin Galactica thing. Yeah, where Virgin it was gonna Galactica. it was gonna be like you could go out and experience space and it would be in like a plane or something. Oh, and, and then you come back down again. Yeah, you come back down again. Yeah. Oh, so it's pretty much just like a plane that just happens to go out of the the system and then back in again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But that, that's never come to fruition, has it, ever? I've never seen anything more of it, to be honest. Because I, I remember, wasn't there a guy from NSYNC that had booked Tom? It wasn't Joey Fatone, No, it was wasn't it? Joey Fatone. No, it wasn't Joey Fatone. It was the blonde one. The funny thing is we met that guy. He's... Well, we didn't, we didn't meet I him. I met him. I said hello to him. Did you say hello yeah, to him, yeah, did you? Yeah. Hello, Joey Fatone. I was like, I'm a huge NSYNC fan. No, you did not. No, you did not. So, <laughs> no. Joey, if you remember, Joey Fatone was the guy in NSYNC that was like was tall. Well, they all had a goatee. Well, yeah, they all had goatees. No, no, because it was a smaller guy with a goatee. And there was the tattooed guy with the goatee. And there was the tall guy with the goatee. Joey Fatone is the tall, the tallest. Guy. Oh, I'm getting Backstreet Boys mixed you up. Know, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of goatees back then. Oh my then. god! Joey Fatone was in NSYNC. I know. And he was the guy. He always did like a lot of the dancing. In fact, Cody on a spin the other day was saying about Joey Fatone being like the best dancer in NSYNC. Was he really? Well, go on to Cody. <laughs> Cody yeah. doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. Anyway, do you know for Joey for Tony? Joey for Tony. Is it for Tony? I don't Fatone. know. He was on that um, the zero, zero the zero gravity ride that we did in Florida. He was on that, and apparently he, went so he on works. It. He works on it. He works on it. Oh. That's what he does now as a job. Supposedly he did it once a while ago, and he was obsessed with it. He was his wife was there as well. I don't know if his kids were there, but um, I don't think they were. But his wife was there for sure. He was on the part of the plane where somebody threw up mm. mid because we were right at the top of the flight. Obviously, we had Vic throwing up all over herself, <laughs> but down the further side, down on the other side, somebody had literally thrown up in mid, like mid zero gravity, and it was literally it's just, just floating. Through, yeah. But the thing, what well, the thing is though, it's like it projectiles. So yeah. any movement, like I remember, I pushed off the floor when we did that whole thing where everyone dived towards the camera, and I smacked the ceiling. So can you imagine throwing up? It would literally just fire. Yeah. Until it hit it something. Would, it would fire. It would probably slow down as it lost its momentum. And then it would just be hanging around until the plane went down, and then it would go splat <laughs> on top of somebody. Anyway, let's talk about vomit. <laughs> so, plan of action for the day: we absolutely have to go for a dog walk. Yeah. Because it's unbelievable weather. But I'm thinking we should maybe leave it a bit later when it's not so hot for him. It's midday now, isn't it? Mm. Give it a couple of hours. I need to film a reel. I need to film it for makeup reel. 
I'm quite busy actually, unfortunately, on a beautiful day out. So we sat outside with ice cream. Oh, we should buy ice creams. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, How many have you had? You've had more than me. This is my third. No, I've only had one. Really? You really? No! So this is mine. Might be one more though. Mm. I've got mix. No, you've not got any mixer left. No, I do. I made loads. Oh. Um, yeah, so okay, well, we'll go do, go do bits of work or what have you. Yeah. And then let's just. Go for dog walk and enjoy the rest of the night, I suppose. Yeah. Yay! Cool. Okay, guys, the part of the vlog that you've probably been waiting for. First thing I want to address, I am very linered today. I have just finished shooting. We've been shooting all day for a new Valentino beauty campaign. It's been brilliant, I've loved it, but I've just been doing loads of different makeup looks, so much so that my eyes now are like smarting and I can feel them just wanting to cry. Um, but I've literally just finished shooting and it was this cool like graphic liner look. I did have a really bright coral lip on. So I quickly just changed that. I had like a wet look hair look. So I'm probably not looking my usual self, but I have been putting off this video now filming my unboxing <laughs> all week and I don't know why I just feel like I'm really nervous about this unboxing for some reason so I've been putting it off and I was like you know what no I'm just gonna get this filmed tonight while I at least have a base of makeup on so that's why so this unboxing is really really exciting to me for anyone who has been watching my channel for a long time or for at least the last year I had a bag on my wish list that I really really wanted from Hermes and and I feel like I actually said to you that I'd given up hope because the chances of getting that particular bag were so rare, so slim, that I'd kind of given up hope. And I'll be honest, a lot of you have already seen, you've already sneak peeked this bag in a recent reel. I kind of threw it in there as a little curveball, just so that any of you that kind of watch the vlogs or know that this was coming would know. And it was so cool how many of you spotted it and were like, it's here. I just love the encouragement, guys. I love the support. You guys are such enablers. Let's just get into this, shall we? My new MS has arrived. Before I get into where I got it from, all of the details about it, let's just unbox the thing because I know that a lot of you will be here for unboxing. I actually wasn't even going to unbox it because I have obviously had it out, I've had it on my shelf so I could actually look at it. I have just put it back inside but it did obviously come with the brown Hermes bow ribbon all tied beautifully around it. I don't know if any of you would have been able to tell from the size of the box. The size of the bag. Make your guesses right now in the comments of what this is going to be and you can comment again and say if you were right in terms of size, shape, style, uh, material if you want to. It would be cool to see if all of you get this right. So here we have my bag in a bag. Um, in the box obviously there's you know receipt, there is the, um, the rain mark, the little Hermes booklet, and um, of course it came with the felt as well. I I've taken all that off. I got too excited. I want to look at my bag. So yeah, so that is all inside of the box. Okay, right, let's, let's do the thing. Oh my goodness, I feel like my palms are sweating. Okay guys, are you ready? Are you ready for the best bag unboxing yet, I think? Okay, who guessed right? <laughs> this is the Kelly 25. Jean Ambre Epsom Leather Inez. Is that everything? Let's just take a little second to appreciate her. The 25 Kelly was my original dream, like my ideal bag. I also want to offset the next bit of conversation about bags. For those who don't like bags or aren't into collecting or don't like Hermes, this probably isn't the video for you. So you're going to hear me gushing about Hermes and this bag for a while now. So <laughs> just, just to pre-warn you of that, it's a bag I saw and thought that is the Hermes bag that I want to add to my collection first. As a lot of you know, that didn't happen and in fact I ended up adding this beautiful vintage Kelly 28 to my collection last year. This is a 1972 Kelly and she was in the most pristine condition. She is still just an absolute dream come true. But the size I always wanted was a 25. I've just bought a Twilly actually on Hermes. I've got a Twilly, I'm gonna tie it round. 
I did just have, for the past few days, I've had a gorgeous little Dior Twilly tied rounder. I'll insert a little clip. She looks so beautiful, the blue and the white. I've taken that off just for this video so you can see it properly and also just in case it offends anyone having a Dior Twilly on an Hermes bag, but I think you do you, you can do whatever you want if you want to accessorise your own bag with a different brand. So I bought this bag from Luxury Promise. I bought a few things before from Luxury Promise, as you may know, in fact the the Hermes blanket that I'm sat on right here, I bought that from Luxury Promise. My other Chanel, I have a Coco top handle Chanel in a kind of similar yellow to this. Again, I bought that from Luxury Promise last year because again, the dream of finding the ombre bag was I'd given up. I'd given up the hunt trying to find it. So many of you tried to find it for me. I can't tell you how many DMs I have had from you guys when you've found similar bags or yellow toned Hermes bags on different auction sites and things like that. And thank you so much. I checked them all out to see if it was a perfect bag for me. And it was never quite the perfect bag or it was far too expensive or maybe the condition wasn't right. Just something just didn't feel right. However, it was about 18 months to two Two years ago that I met Sabrina from Luxury Promise in the Bulgari Hotel. She introduced herself, we got chatting and she told me all about what she did and I was like, do you ever find people bags? And she was like, yeah, that's kind of what we specialise in. And I said, the bag that I'm desperately looking for is this bag. I said, the Kelly 25 in the ombre, the, the amber shade um, that I've seen. And she literally at the time was holding the Birkin 25 in amber. And I was like, that is literally perfect, but I really want a Kelly. Anyway, she said, I will keep my eye out for you for the foreseeable. Hence, now Sabrina has just found me my bag. The fact that she carried on looking for me for that long is just insane service. And that is why I want to give her a shout out. I bought this bag myself. I don't want anyone to think that this was a freebie. <laughs> this is a big purchase that I made myself. I just want to give Luxury Promise a shout out, not only because I'm a customer, but also that customer service has absolutely blown me away. She did not need to keep looking for me. She did not need to kind of prioritise finding this Kelly 25 and Amber for me. Um, and she did. The fact she carried on looking. The day that I got a message to say that she'd found one, I literally screamed. <laughs> That's why I really want to give her a shout out in this video because those guys are amazing. I've been a customer before. I will continue to be a customer, a very loyal customer to those guys. They are a fantastic team. Can't recommend them more. But yeah, just so you know, this bag I bought myself. <laughs> in my head, I've kind of told myself it's it's a big congratulations to myself for hitting a million followers on Instagram and also my birthday's kind of next month. I'm sort of using these as my excuses, but at the same time, this is a bag I've always wanted. And as you know, Hermes is an investment piece. It's something that down the line, if I did ever want to resell it again, I'm sure it will hold its value. If not, it will only rise in value. So whilst buying an Hermes bag in the first place is a big investment, um, I've seen this as an investment for the future. So that is what has made me want to buy this. A lot of you could say, why didn't you wait and try and get one in store? Honestly, the whole rat race of trying to find the right bag in a med store, it's just a little bit disheartening, isn't it? I know a lot of you probably feel the same way. Fantastic if you've managed to get into an Hermes store and be and be offered a bag. I know a few people like, um, for example, Karen, who I love on YouTube, she recently was just offered a bag and that's amazing, but that's never happened to me. And the chances of them ever offering me a Kelly 25 and Amber are so slim when the Amber shade is extremely rare. Apparently they've only recently relaunched a few more of the Kelly 25 and the Amber. And so the chance of me ever getting my hands on one of those from one of the very selective stores that has it, the chances are just so, so slim. And so when, when Sabrina messaged me about this bag, of course it had a higher price than in the store because it is resale. It's a very extremely rare bag. So of course I paid more for it than in the store. But like I say, for me, it's a big investment. It's my ideal bag. So I'm, I know a lot of you will understand that. And after speaking with a few people that I know and explaining to them, they're like, look, 
just buy it. You can always resell it in the future if you want to. It will hold its value. It's a great investment. You're not going to lose money on it. Just buy the bag. So I did. What else can I tell you? Some questions that I might get. The condition, it is brand new. It's never been worn, it's never been used. Obviously, whoever bought it wanted to sell it on, um, and I understand why. So it's completely brand new, completely brand new. It's got all the stickers attached. I've already been told to take off the stickers fairly soon, just so that the metal doesn't start to oxidize. So I will be, I just haven't yet. I only got this a couple of days ago. But as you can see, it is just absolutely immaculate. It's perfect, which makes me worry about touching it and using it I'm kind of I'm not sure if it's the heat in the room or the fact that I'm kind of <laughs> holding it I must admit I'm one of those people that when I buy a bag I buy a bag to use I don't just leave them sat there on the shelf so I will be getting my use out of this just as soon as I've got a twilly I'll feel a lot more comfortable holding the handle but yeah I mean I'm sure you've all seen this I had a Kelly 25 if you're here you're most likely someone who adores Inez or handbag unboxings but I'll just quickly show you I have a little strap and it's so gorgeous with the strap my blue kelly that you can see to say um before 1973 or maybe 1974 or maybe a few years after that actually they only then started putting straps on kelly so this bag here actually doesn't have a strap but i did manage to find one on etsy believe it or not in the same color i searched in Hermes for the same color i couldn't find one the one i wanted kept going out of stock and then coming in and i literally bought it and then it was like oh no sorry it's out of stock and it got so frustrating straight and I was like I'm just gonna buy one from Etsy so I can actually wear it as a crossbody so the fact that this has its own strap is just great there we go perfect length of strap as well and then inside oh my gosh I haven't even seen this so inside it's a little padlock and then she's completely beautifully amber on the inside and then with a little zip pocket at the back. I always wanted the 25 so that I could use her as an everyday bag as well as an evening bag. Here she is for size. This size is just wonderful for evenings, date nights, but equally for me going out during the day with a smaller bag. That's why I wanted a 25 rather than a 28 this time. I'll show you a comparison. So for size comparison, this is the 25 and this is the 28. Um, I didn't think there would be so much difference, but actually I feel the 28 feels a fair amount actually bigger. 28 is still a fantastic day bag, like I say, she is wonderful as a day bag, but I feel the 25 is better as more of an evening bag as well. Whereas I wouldn't really take this for an evening anywhere. I would definitely take this for an evening. But the thing I really love about this is the length of the strap. It's just so perfect. It just fits exactly where I'd want it to sit. It's so strange looking at myself with this makeup. It feels so like dramatic and glamorous. So yeah, I wish my Twilly was here so I could have shown it on for you so you could have seen it, but gosh, it's got so sunny again. It weren't really dull before. The, the sun is out full force now, so it's getting really, really hot. So what else can I tell you? The material is a beautiful textured Epsom. It's all in the silver hardware. I absolutely adore. I feel with this colour like gold. Yeah, gold feels like the obvious option. It would look beautiful in gold, but I just feel like the silver really pops on it. I just think she's exquisite. Honestly, I have no, no doubts about it. I just think she's absolutely perfection. Honestly, I just, feel, I just feel so lucky to have her. The fact that this stage in my career, I, yeah, I just, you know, I've just worked so hard. The past nine years, I've just worked so, so hard. I built the brand, never trying to be complacent. And I just feel really proud that I'm at the point where I can afford to buy these enormous luxuries. I could only have ever dreamed of owning my uh, my own Hermes bag back when I was 15 and me and my best friend Lucy would dream about Hermes bags. The whole thought of just owning this beautiful luxury piece, the fact that I'm able to afford and purchase and invest in these luxuries really does mean a lot to me. This isn't just a throwaway or just another bag for me. This is a bag I have been searching for for a number of years. Yeah, and like I say, the fact that Sabrina and the team of Luxury Promise found this, I genuinely can't believe it. Anyway, I'll stop going on. I've been talking now for 30 minutes. But yeah, I just wanted to show you and unbox this absolutely exquisite bag. 
I just feel so lucky. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Did you guess it right? Did you guess this is what I was gonna go for? I mean, in my last video when I mentioned that I just got her and I just paid for her, a lot of you got it pretty much spot on. Most of you thought yellow, a lot of you thought Kelly. A number of you, I don't know if a lot of you got 25, but a lot of you pretty much got it bang on. So I just love how much you guys know me. Do you think it was the right choice? Do you think I've made a great investment? However, I also have something really, really exciting to announce now as well. Two very exciting things to show you in one video, actually. A lot of you have been messaging me recently regarding some of the jewellery pieces that I have been wearing and I've just been very coy. Let's just say I am very, very excited to announce that I will soon be launching my second jewellery collection with Edge of Ember. I'm wearing a lot of pieces today from my current Edge of Ember collection, the Cosmos collection. As you know, it's pretty much all I wear. It's a jewellery line that I collaborated with Edge of Ember on last year. I designed with this Cosmos theme, so everything is very space themed. The Orion ear cuff and the Orion ring. Sorry, it's really bright now, the Orion ring and the Orion necklace have been enormous bestsellers. But we've had, you know, the satin, satin bracelet and the satin necklace to match and earrings. I mean, the whole collection has just been the biggest success so much so that the team are most likely going to keep rolling out the best sellers. But I would definitely say to you, if there's something that you have your eye on from the Cosmos collection, I would most likely buy it sooner rather than later, because as soon as the last bit of stock of the majority of the items has gone, they won't be repurchasing. They've just, the whole team has just been repurchasing each piece over and over, just so they're constantly in stock, which has been amazing, which means we've sold thousands and thousands of pieces of jewellery so I just can't say thank you enough I'm so grateful but yeah if you are looking for a piece and you've not bought it yet or maybe you're thinking of buying it for a birthday or something coming up like for instance we do the gorgeous little birthstone charms here I have my ruby one for July things like that may be worth getting your hands on them sooner rather than later because very very soon we will be launching collection number two this again has been a long time coming it has been a brainchild of inspiration once again and I am extremely excited about this one. I have been wearing a number of the pieces on and off, trying not to wear them too much in the vlogs, trying to not bring too much attention to them because I didn't really want to show you them yet. And I'm not going to show you the collection just yet until I get a few more samples through and then I'll be able to show you in a lot more detail. But I just wanted to let you know it is coming very soon. Let's just say it, July. It's coming in July. I've been meeting up with the team. We've been having constant Zoom chats throughout the lockdown and really Really bringing this collection to life. The Cosmos collection is my baby, I love it, I couldn't feel more proud of it, but I think the next collection is going to blow you away, it's completely different, very different theme. Yeah, I was just very inspired with this, I mean I was very inspired with this one too, but inspired in a very different way for the next collection, and I just hope that you love it as much as I've enjoyed putting it all together with the team. We have the best, the most wonderful team at, um, at Edge of Ember, and they are a dream to work with, and Steph, who is the jewellery designer, she is just amazing to work with, so we've just been going back and forth on our design ideas, and it's just become the most amazing collection, but you would not believe how pieces there are because we've just kind of gone wild there's more pieces in this next collection than the cosmos collection so hopefully you will be spoiled for choice i can't actually wait so i wanted to let you know and to announce that because i've not actually told you yet and it's all been going on behind the scenes yeah let me know are you excited about the new age of ember collection um i'd love to kind of know if there's anything in particular that you're hoping that we have created um, it would be really kind of nice to see what you're anticipating or what you're hoping for. Equally, I'd love to know your thoughts on my beautiful new new bag. If you are brand new and you've come to the video for the first time because of the unboxing, then hi and welcome. And make sure you hit the subscribe button. Because if you like this kind of thing, then you're probably going to love everything else on my channel. Thanks so much guys for watching. I hope that you're enjoying the sunshine wherever you are in the world. I love you lots and I'll see you soon. Bye.